Today we're going to be comparing the two primary full-size single-child models in Boogaboo's current lineup, the Fox 2 and the Lynx. Boogaboo seems to have taken something of a new marketing approach with these two as far as I see it, in that, rather than mainstaging a pair of strollers claimed as being quite distinct from each other in form and capability, as they've tended to do in the past, I see these models most often discussed as more or less the same model, with the Fox 2 as a luxury version, with all the bells and whistles, and the Lynx as simply the economy model, cheaper as a result of having slightly reduced functionality and capabilities. While in my estimation, however, the differences in real-world use between these two strollers is actually a good deal more pronounced than this. And in this video then, I'm going to explain what I mean by looking at the differences between these models in terms of comfort, functionality, performance, and mechanics. So let's get into it then, beginning with the Fox 2, which clocks in at 12.2 kilos when fully assembled, and folds down to 47 by 60 by 90 centimeters with the seat attached. As far as child comfort is concerned, Unlike the Lynx, the Fox 2 always comes with both the seat and bassinet, attachable to the same frame. And size-wise, in terms of the seat, the model measures 102cm in length and 35cm in width, and as such will comfortably accommodate a child up until around 3, maybe 3.5 three or so, before beginning to feel a tad cramped. As is standard for Boogaboo, the textiles, padding, harness, and canopy are all well tailored and include a variety of subtle functional details that make using the model feel a bit more luxurious and intuitive than a lot of competing strollers on the wider market. And this emphasis on added functionality continues when looking beyond the seat frame as well, in the model's ability to fold down into a single self-standing piece with the seat both forward-facing and reversed, as well as with the bassinet, and also through the inclusion of a pair of dials on the inside facing of the central bar, which access the locking mechanism at the opposite end from the arm-mounted folding triggers, and and allow the model to be unfolded without bending all the way down to the ground. With uncareful users, this second function can be a weak point down the road for the Fox 2, a result of the hyper-complexity of internal mechanisms needed to pull it off, which may break or become misaligned through excessive force. Though at the same time, this easier unfolding option can also be a nice bonus for those who learn to use it properly, and it's worth noting that the lack of this mechanism on the Lynx is one of the model's chief criticisms, as it's quite difficult to unfold the model without touching the rear wheels. When it comes to driving, as a successor model to the Buffalo, the Fox 2 has both excellent maneuverability and terrain capability, resulting from its much larger than average front wheels, its multi-layered suspension, its foam-filled tires with a raised ridge running along the apex, and an overall angle of the chassis, which is narrow at the handle but widens out at the wheels. The Fox 2 won't handle all off-road conditions, of course, but it will tolerate a good deal more than the vast majority of comparably sized reversible seat models on the wider market, and under smoother conditions, it's also very comfortable to push with one hand. Okay, let's move on and talk about the Lynx then, which weighs in at 9.5 kilos, nearly 3 kilos lighter than the Fox 2, and folds down as a single piece to 60 by 60 by 88 centimeters, making it smaller overall, but a tad more bulky front to back. Size-wise, the Lynx's seat is a bit smaller than the Fox 2, both in terms of length and width, and the seat frame also sits a little lower to the ground. Like the Fox, the Lynx maintains the same level of textile quality and smaller comfort features on its canopy and harness, Though beyond this, there are a few important differences between these models. Most importantly that the Lynx's bassinet is shallower, and for this reason not approved for overnight sleeping like the Fox, and the model has also brought back the chameleon's rather annoying two-handed method for adjusting the seat tilt, as opposed to following the newer standard of both Boogaboo and the wider market of using a single lever mounted at the head of the frame, as the Fox does. Move on to look at the Lynx's functionality beyond the seat frame. Like the Fox, the Lynx can also be folded with the seat in either facing, as well as with the bassinet. Though the arm-mounted folding triggers are a bit more fiddly, both in that they require four fingers to activate, as well as in that they are somewhat cumbersome to activate upside down when unfolding from the self-standing position. And while, mechanically, I must admit that the simpler internal mechanisms on the Lynx's folding system do create less potential for alignment problems in the long run, a lack of rear and central bar suspension, in comparison to the Fox, unfortunately means that the Lynx's me mechanisms and connection points are much more subject to stress from traversing rougher terrain. And in addition to impacting longevity, this lack of suspension, as well as the Lynx's somewhat smaller front wheels, 7 inches versus the Fox's 8.5, also greatly impacts the model's driving characteristics, where, despite being lighter weight and still having Boogaboo's awesome tires, the Lynx is both less comfortable to maneuver with one hand and is also not even close to as terrain capable as the Fox, feeling quite jittery even over lighter off-road terrain. So, which one of these is the better purchase then? Despite the difference in price, for me, the Fox 2 wins hands down. And when you're looking at prices, by the way, please note that in comparison to the wider market, it's not like the Lynx is particularly cheap. We're still talking about 1100 bucks after all. But what you lose by pinching those last few pennies, in my opinion, is pretty immense. Drivability, longevity, and much smoother functions. My theory is that the Lynx's designation as a cheaper Fox has a lot to do with the fact that the Chameleon 3 Plus is still widely sold outside the US, and either Boogaboo or distributors around the world might be trying to keep the Lynx from looking too much like a direct replacement for this outdated model. 
But given its size, weight, and capabilities, this is to me exactly what the Lynx actually is. It just feels a lot more like using a chameleon than using a fox. And like the chameleon, it's also then, in my opinion, a bit more of a style piece. While the Fox 2, by contrast, is actually something unique on the current market, being, within its size and weight class, quite unparalleled in both its driving characteristics and its comfort-oriented functionality. In any case, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. If you'd like to know more about either of these models, we have standalone reviews for both of them, and links have been added in the description. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find that by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.